Um. All right, see the next battle. Look at that crazy ass loading screen. Oh, I think that's the Voltaz. Sorry, I'm just jamming to some tunes. Um, here's the map, obviously. So we're chilling in Japan now. <clears throat> Puru, I love her. She's from Zeta Gundam as well. Um, she's chilling with the main. Oh, she's from Double Zeta Gundam. Sorry, I'm retarded. But uh, that's Judo, who was the protagonist of Double Zeta. Um, and they're just doing after first game shenanigans. See. She, she used to work for the bad guys, and he was a good guy from the beginning, so he basically converted her. She's like a 12-year-old girl who's just obsessed with him. Um, as you can see by the childlike wonder in her eyes. Uh, Judo's just like, meh. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, that's gonna, that's gonna end well. See, she's got feels going on. She's acknowledging his feels. Um, oh, and then Lena is um, Judo's sister, so that's actually a pretty fair reason to be worried. Uh, okay, stuff happened so that he couldn't be with his sister. He's worried. Yada yada. Just it's just character plot. I will obviously leave this up for a second so you can keep reading while I talk about stuff too. So she's like super supportive of him, obviously, which is really cool. Yeah, let's see. Um Judah's got a really fun mech. And then Puru too is actually a clone of Puru that they made. Um the same kind of deal happened. She was evil, and then she kind of becomes good. But um, in this, she went missing after after the first game ended. So they're kind of looking for her. Um, okay, uh, my my our our two bros from the uh, from the first mission are yeah Ryoma and Benkai are getting here. They're probably all like crying. Tears, because Musashi is gone. Oh man, man, I love crazy 60s and 70s character designs, and they just awesome. Um, okay, they're gonna explain uh, the Aegis Project, so you know, give this a quick glance. Mm -hmm. To defend the Earth from the oncoming shockwave caused by last fight. <laughs> that man. <laughs> oh, he's pretty standard. Um, I put it as a ludicrous, <laughs> ludicrous kiss, ludicrous countermeasure. Um, idea of covering the Earth sphere is far fetched. It was designed as a countermeasure to deal with alien invasion, which really did happen. Um, so that's why we had this hype microwave station built on the moon before this all even happened, because people were paranoid. Yep, still more paranoia. Uh, Dr. BN was like the guy who led uh, the humans that went bad in the first game for a while, uh, and the arrogators are the big aliens that popped up in the first game. So yes, that's, that's what that whole deal was. Um, the DC forces that they're mentioning are what Dr. B and named his forces. Uh, they were called the uh, Divine Crusaders. So, just some more explanation. And the DC weren't initially bad either. Like, it was just some organization, and it was like, okay, cool, let them do their cool science stuff. And then BN was like, nah, man, we're gonna take over. But not really, but plot, etc., etc. <sighs> A lot of ellipses in this. Operation Protective Screen! <laughs> and it's the best. I, it's, next time I put sunscreen on my body, that's what I'm gonna call it. Operation Protective Screen. Uh, DC were cool. They must have had awesome ideas, each with an awesome name. Operation Drill to the Center of the Earth and Build a Base There. It's so secretive. 
That's not actually something they did, by the way. Uh, but, whatever. And I think the Moon Crater Cradle is the is the um the name of the microwave base, but don't uh don't fully trust me on that because I'm not actually sure. <sighs> All these wise old men. Jeez. More deep thought. Um, so they got like what 128 shielding satellites all up in the lunar orbit. Wait, so that means they're around the moon, right? Not the Earth. And then they're going to use the microwave station to transfer energy, which obviously that, that, would, that would work technically, I guess. Um... Okay, and it'll make a shield as bit as with as much gravitational uh, heft as the moon. Not a not a bad idea. Um, and then their hair incorporation and Mount Industries. They're dropping references to other anime series that are um, there are other organizations from other anime series, obviously. Mm. And now they're like, what? Well, what if we don't have enough energy to do this junk? And they're like, oh, the microwave station's not quite enough. So... The Macross, which is a huge motherfucking mech. Um, we're actually gonna see that in a bit. Um, but uh, the Titans took it, because they're a bunch of dickbags. Uh, Shushiko Shirakawa is a huge huge evil bad guy dude, but he helped everyone out in the first game, so people weren't really sure if he was good or bad. Uh, he's bad. Uh, Logias, which they just mentioned, is like this world that's like, un in like, ugh, excuse me, it's like underground. Like, it's just, it's, you, you go down through the Earth's crust, and there's just a whole nother, like, hollowed out world down there, and that's where Shu, uh, Shirakawa, and uh, Masaki come from. And they've got cool tech down there, and, and junk. Um, SRX is another big robot project. They all, it's three robots that combine to form a huge-ass robot. Like, big, big. Um, they, they, <clears throat> they, they took all those guys, confiscated their shit, and uh, it's a big deal. It was piloting the. Uh, that's Ryoma, I think. Uh, what if we what if we ever play the other Super Robot Wars game uh, original? I, I think it's called Original. Original something or other. Away, oh, I don't remember. Uh, he's one of the main characters of it, so you really get to see him. Uh, let's see. And they're like, well, with just this one base, we've kind of got stuff going, but not really. Still figuring out the energy. And they're just bringing like tons of tech from a bunch of different um, anime series right now, which is pretty cool. Um, like it's a bunch, it's just like a bunch of like crazy theoretical space particles that should not exist, but they all happen to exist simultaneously in this world. So it's really cool. And they're gonna use the robots. But they're not, because Judo's here to tell everyone that he just talked to the Getter team and shit went down. Oh, look at Quatra, he's such a pretty boy. Uh, he's from Wing Gundam. Um, which was like an an it was like a mecha anime geared towards women, so it's five main male characters, and they're all pretty boys to various degrees. Um they're a bundle of fun. I think that was the first Gundam anime to premiere over here. It was made in 1995, but we got it in like the late 90s, early 2000s. Oh no! Angry music. Let's see, Titans are invading quicker than I expected. Could this be a preemptive strike against the Preventers? Uh, that's what the good guys call themselves, by the way. They like to call themselves the Preventers because. Naming conventions are awesome. So they already know what the Titans are gonna do. Um, okay, yeah, Titans were just letting these guys go for like the past couple months so that they could just build this and take it. 
It was pretty mean. Everyone's pretty jacked about that, obviously. <laughs> Judo's got a shifty face on. I think Benji's a pretty smart guy. I don't remember what series he's from, but um, I'm pretty sure he's got some science-y stuff going on. He's a big tactical guy. Uh, you two will go with Puru. Get your mobile suits, because we're going to have to fight. Add they're worried about the other bases, which they certainly should be, but... Stop. Okay, that's my alarm. Enemies are coming. Titans are here. Chapter 2. Bearing Disgrace. It's getting pretty hype. I know you guys love my title introductions. I'm the master of the title card. The master. Oh, hey, puppy. What are you doing? Hmm. Oh. The plot thickens. <clears throat> so obviously this is the enemy boss. They didn't just give me eight generic looking shitheads. This is my stuff. Ouch, 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 don't stab me. Oh, uh, they're mentioning that they don't know what those bots are, and that they don't think that those are the Titans. Uh, that's because it isn't the Titans. Nubia connections, so more references to bad guys from other shows. I've got that working with the Titans, maybe, maybe not. Uh, I think the Hiren Corporation is actually Quattro's family's business, because uh, Quattro is like rich, super rich family. Uh, we have to kill them, Roger. Hey, Judo, shit I gotta ask you. What? We gotta fight, motherfuckers. And they're like, oh. <laughs> like, he was all mad that she was talking to him, but there's like a treasure chest over there, and he's like, yeah, go get some treasure chests. Um. Actually. There we go. See, uh, Benkai and all of them are now in their robot, which is the Getter Dragon. And. It is rather cool. I'm gonna send Puru down here to this beast. Um, the cool thing about the three of them in this thing is that they actually have a couple different forms. And the pilot changes depending on who it is. Like, they got the Poseidon, which is Benkai's mech, and it's like a water type. Um, the Liger's good on ground, and it's Hayato. And then Ryoma pilots the dragon, which is the flying one. See? <laughs> and, uh, yeah. yeah. I mostly keep it in the dragon, because the dragon is, like, the best form. And I think Ryuma is basically the main pilot for it. Here, I'm just, you know, setting myself up for combat in three seconds. That's the Double Zeta Gundam. It's pretty good. Uh, we got the Gundam Sandrock over here. It's pretty chill. We're gonna let the, let the enemy have their way with us now. Bum bum, bum bum. Oh, I love the music in this game, though. It's it is the niceness. Bum ba da 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 dum ba da da dum. I <laughs> oh, see so they're gonna attack us with the mysterious beam. Let's see how this all plays out. Bum 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 bum. Dum, 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 dum. <laughs> oh, what a mysterious beam. Uh, and it hit me, which is a bummer. I'm pretty sure that a female actually voices Quattro. <laughs> He's such a Nancy. But I mean, obviously, as you can tell, he could be much worse. So, he's got heat channels going for him. Hey there, you little puppy. Get out of here. I'll beat the shit out of you. No, I won't hurt you. I love you. Um, so, they're just gonna move up here so that I can, like, wreck them. 
it's really nothing special. Uh, this game's gonna get crazy though with some huge battles here in the future. So, pump for that. Uh, he dodged it. He's a cool kid. Oh, you know, you know you all love him. Um, that right there was a critical hit, just so everyone knows. I think it just doubles the damage that you do. So instead of doing 2,000 like he would normally do, he did 4,000. So that's pretty cool. Uh, my turn again. As you can see, this is certainly a time-consuming game, but it is a load of fun. Yeah. Got dual sensors going on. Oh, that was a part, by the way, an item part that I can do stuff with. And I hate repair kits, so I will sell that in a bit. Um, let's see, we can attack the Titan Cannon. <laughs> Get ready for the greatest theme song ever. Ready? Go. just shot a laser blast out of his foot. <laughs> he clearly comes from a very serious show. Um, here. Have some, uh, judo in the Double Zeta. This thing's pretty cool. I look at that cityscape in the background. I just... I love it. The damage is done. Da, da, da. Um, and then probably just gonna, you know, cut them with the heat shuttles. Because that's like literally all Kawatra has. He can either shoot you with his machine guns up in his forehead for no damage, or he can hit you with his dual blade thingies. He is truly a varied and all-around unit, yes. <laughs> Still, he, he's pretty cool, I'm not gonna deny that. Um, because this is the second game all these guys are chilling in, um, they all already have like their super suits. Like they, they had in the first game, they start out with their initial suits and then they switch to upgraded versions. Um, obviously we're playing after they got their upgraded versions, so in the second game, which is now, they are in the super suits. Uh, I think I've done everything I have. Let's let the enemies die. They shall fall upon our blades. Yes, and they're gonna come up here and attack him, and you're really gonna see how much defense the Ditarn 3 has. It's absurd. One, two, three. Bum, bum. Ditarn 3! <laughs> God, this song. I love the intro, but I hate how silly it gets afterwards. <laughs> And Titan Neg Cannon! Uh, because I play these games so much, I've actually developed a bad habit of when I'm playing other games, I will shout my, uh, I will just shout random Japanese sounding phrases as if I was using, like, a super technique. It gets pretty ridiculous sometimes. I, I totally blame Super Robot Wars Alpha Gaiden because of the way they shout their attacks. I wish they'd attack someone who wasn't Quatra. I'm pretty sure everyone's tired of seeing his heat shuttles right now. I'm trying to think of other stuff to say about him. Uh, he's a rich boy. Um, 
I'm, I'm sure you can't see it because he's pale and blonde haired, but I'm pretty sure he's actually supposed to be of Arabic descent, if I remember correctly. Um, the, his big thing is that, like, he's not a big fighter, or he wasn't initially, he didn't like fighting. Um, so that was, like, one of his big things to get over in the course of the show, was he just didn't want to wreck anyone. Um, I don't know what else to say about him, because he wasn't particularly my favorite character in that anime. He, he has nice hair. There, I said it. Come at me. Um, I, I do like, uh, like the cape thing he's got going on, though. I, I love this, he's up in the air now, right? So you get, like, an above-cloud view of the city skyline. I should... I know it's silly, but for a game made in 2001, I just, I love the depth. And then the skyline again, which I just... Mm, I'm absolutely in love with these backgrounds that you fight in. Oh, excuse me, can't stop bourbon. <laughs> but, oh my god, we have so many crazy mechs coming up. That's a good story. Yeah, story. Plot. Plot. Alright. Let's keep going. What? Oh, I get to attack it with Puru. I know you're excited for that. I know you are. So we'll bring Ryuma down here. Actually, we're not gonna bring Ryuma down there. No. You can't make me. I'm attack with uh, Puru. She's got the uh, Kubelay Mark II, which is like one of my favorite noble suits of all time. I don't know why, but um. Just check it out right now. Let's see, she's from the same series as Judo, so they share the same theme music. I didn't really get to show that off till now. And she's bringing the noise. Yeah. Too good. Too good. A little bit of stretching on my part. Alright, Judo's like, yo, you shouldn't have fought us. Uh, Banjo's thinking, yeah. Guys, caught several more mechs coming. Ah, oh, the Titans are here. We should have known. But you didn't. <laughs> troll -a -lo -lo -lo. It's my teammates. Um, the Zeta and Victory Gundam. Okay, so Camille is the main hero of Zeta, whereas Judo is the main hero of Double Zeta. So uh, Camille and uh, Jared from the first mission hate each other. They were rivals. Um, let's see... And Camille's like, yeah, we were hiding, we helped kill some people, and we're gonna come over and help you. And Judo's like... Or Judo. Quatra's like, people are here! And obviously these are the bad guys. And then it's like Ryuma's like, ah, I'll get you this time. I got my super mech. Uh, Yazin's a pretty big bad guy in Zeta. And Camille's upset that Yazin's still alive. Um, yeah, that's, I really don't know what else to say with that. Uh, and Judo's upset for Camille. Oh, yeah, they're upset because there's a mobile suit over there that they all know. Um, the Hayakushiki, and it's uh, Shara's Nibble, aka Quattro's suit, and he was a good guy in the first game, but now he's chilling with the bad guys, and they're like, why are you chilling with the bad guys? See, he's all like, yes, I'm with the bad guys, and everyone's like, no. Yeah, <laughs> look, at, look at Judo's not happy that you've betrayed his face. Ah, and Quattro's being a cool kid. See, this is tricky, because we got a Quattro, we got a Quattra. Ugh. Um, 
He's like, oh, these guys mean business. Camille's like, nah, you mentored me. How could you be evil? You were my master. Emma's another, just like, uh, just like Quantra. She was a bad guy, and she was a good guy in the first game, and now she's stuck working with the bad guys. So everyone's gonna be really confused. See, Camille's like, no, all the best, all my best friends are working for the enemy. And Uso's not happy about that. He's from uh, the show Victory Gundam, which he was, like, the main character of, and he has, like, the designation of being one of the youngest uh, Mobile Suit lead protagonists from the Mobile Suit Gundam series. Um, so you, there's a tidbit of knowledge for you. Um, Banju already, like, he's pretty much figured out that Quattro has reasons for working with the enemies because he's a cool kid. Quattro's like, I can't tell you. You're gonna have to wait for, like, four more missions, and then I'll tell you. <sighs> I'm digging this music, though, right now. I haven't actually played this game with headphones on before, so I'm really getting to hear some of the lower-layered um, audio. Uh, da -da -da -da. Just more referencing to the... to the... <sighs> good old first game that we haven't played yet, but we will. That's, I'm waiting for that beast to get translated, and it's going to be so much fun. Because unlike this one, you actually like make your character in the first one, and there's a couple different story paths, and overall it's just like, something that I'm really going to like playing. I'll see Banjo's figured it out. He's like, ah, they're, they're with the Titans. Something must have happened. And... Let's see... Yeah, as in, it's like, nah, I'm going to kill you now. We're done talking. Evacuate the smart people. Um, get everyone out by three minutes. Three minutes, by the way, just means three turns. Um, see, they're all bummed because they have to run, but Banjo's like, it doesn't matter if they get the stuff on the Earth because obviously oh, about 50% of all this junk hinges on the moon as well. And they need our robots anyways. So, yes. The moon's where junk's gonna go down. Kirio was like, nah, we gotta fight for forever. We can't run and hide. It's dishonorable. Uh, come on, guys, I wanna fight. Yeah, I know your price. If I some time for three minutes, aka three turns, which will take longer than three minutes. Alright, time for some super combat. Jeez, I forgot how to play already. So I gotta move up there and, like, hurt people for a while. It's gonna be a load of fun. So, let me... Sorry, I just have to think for a second while I move everyone into place. And then... The White Ark. Okay. This is a weird, like, ship thing. Because it actually doesn't do too much fighting. It's much better at healing people. Which is pretty darn cool. Because, you know, just being able to get your health back is insanely useful. Da, 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 da. Sorry, I'm, I'm just jamming down here. Um, okay, we're gonna end our turn. Oh, let me move my body. <sighs> They're gonna bring the noise. Yes, they definitely are gonna bring the noise. Um, Emma's gonna attack me. So, let's see how that goes. I could lose some health here. But Judo is a lot stronger than Emma is, especially since she's just stuck in a Gundam Mark II. <laughs> yeah, he blocked that shit like it was nobody's business. And he was gonna return fire. Oof. Oof. We, we showed her, didn't we? Yeah. Mm. And then some grunt soldiers are gonna move, but um, I honestly don't care what the grunt soldiers do because they can't put a dent in me. Not in the first second level of the game. They are amusing though. Those guys are like spinning a, like a baton nunchuck thing into the air and using it to hover. It is the most ludicrous form of flight ever. Like, I can't believe that someone actually took that and thought that that could be taken serious. <laughs> Alright, um... 
Sirs and madams, we shall be through evacuating in another two minutes. See, that's that whole turn thing I was telling you about. Now it's time to use powers. Um, looks like using mana to activate, like, magic or whatnot. And I, it, usually you can't replenish it through battle, sometimes you can. So this 50 that Japuru has means that I can only use this focus, like, three times, and then it's done. Now if you can see what it does, it'll raise my hit and my evade by 30% for the entire turn. Which basically means this guy has no chance of hitting me. Yes, very low. So we're gonna hit him. I can show you how absurd he looks. Because the answer is really fucking absurd. He, he is a putz. <laughs> oh my god. You can't tell me that you would take that seriously. There's there's no way. It's that is nothing but like pure absurdity and I love it. Alright, let's take out Emma. We're gonna kill her. Show her a bad time. See, like, it's just, that's his pacifistic nature showing again. He's like, I don't want to hurt you, but I'm going to. Unfortunately, Emma's gonna get pretty wrecked. See, she's all sad. But she gives good experience for dying, so whatever. Let's see, I'm down. Sorry, take over for me. She's gonna peace. Um, all right, I'm gonna. No, I'm not gonna split. That would put me into my three weaker uh, units again. I'm going to use alert. What that does is it makes it so the next person who tries to attack me is guaranteed to miss. It's a really cool power. So, yeah. We're gonna use the double tomahawk boomerang power on the Marasa. <laughs> Isn't that the greatest thing ever? I think it's that. Oh. Oh. Wow. He didn't die. He's a feisty mofo. I love him. Get to get. Uh, oh, but because there are three pilots in there, that means that I can use all three of their um their like skills, like um. With these, I can use all their spirit stuff, which is really cool and nifty and good. Sorry, I'm just looking at some stuff, planning out my moves, as it were. Um, I believe. Nope. That's a bummer. I was looking for a way to hit um, Quattro because he's a pretty uh, evasive dude. But there was nothing. <sighs> um, let's see. Victor Gundam and Zeta Gundam were pretty rough because pretty much every protagonist like dies in them. The very, very, very absurd, sad shows. Um, and I think the big thing about them is that it wasn't like some of them weren't even like heroic deaths. Like, they would just go out, fight a regular battle, and then, like, halfway through it, a stray bullet will hit, like, one of their suits, and they just die. Which, I mean, it's very warlike, I mean, that's, that's what happens in war, but at the same time, it's like, wow, way to not make me want to ever, um, identify with a character, or, like, one of your characters. Know what I'm saying? Of course you do. Um, see, I could do that battle. And maybe I'd get out alright, but I'm a little nervous, so I'm gonna use focus first. Get my beam rifle going. We're gonna hit this guy. Oh. 
And then we got some, some more new music going on from Zeta. Explosion. <laughs> oh, I love it. Don't, don't mind me, I'm just back here admiring the, the battlefield, the backgrounds. This Yeah, let's go with the missile launcher. Uh, yeah. So the, the bad thing about the White Arc, which is the unit I'm attacking with, is that it's not super, super powerful. Like, basically what you want to do with it is just heal people with it. Which is good, but that means you shouldn't attack with it too much. I mean, she's also from Victory Gundam. But, obviously, I had injured that Marasai pretty bad. And uh, her missiles have good range, so there was really no reason to not just blow them up and get it done with. Um, let's see. And I don't know. I, I prefer attacking out of range too, like Judo and um, Camille in the Double Zeta and Zeta Gundams are really good at hitting people outside of like other attack ranges since they can't counterattack you. And um, I try to do that when I can. Um, if I don't do that, then my other plan is either I will attack with a unit that I know will kill in one hit, that way they can't counterattack, or I try to use one of my spirit skills so that I dodge the attack. That's generally my plan of action, and like the only way that I ever like consider um, doing attacks. But I mean, there, there are exceptions. There's always exceptions to that rule. I will make them when I get to them. Uh, so we let the enemy attack again. Um, yeah, see, look, Quantra's hitting me, and his clay bazooka's gonna do 100, but Banju and the Daitarin can only hit with a 9%, so instead of that, we're gonna defend. So that we can take minimum damage. Uh, see, this is cool. If certain units go up against each other, uh, they sometimes get some um, some dialogue going on. So Banju's all up, uh, getting trying to get some information out of him. Uh, but I'm just I'm digging this this music right now. Give me a sec. I came back. One, two, three. So that's a good thing I defended, because that hit for a bit of damage. More than I would have liked normally. Um, they're gonna try to attack the Zeta Gundam, with Camille in there obviously, but it has a 0% chance to hit, and... Fuck it. They can attack as much as they want. It's not gonna work. Hey, Poppy Poppy. Hmm. I'm a fire of my laser beams, player. Boom. Yeah. I bet you wish you had a stronger suit. To be fair, using like a grunt suit like the Marasai against the Zeta Gundam isn't even fair. <laughs> God, I hate these things. They make no sense. I like them too. I mean, I don't know why I say I hate them, because I don't actually hate them. I just think it's funny that they're using a super huge glow stick. Um, just, just as a form of flight. Oh, oh I don't get it. And once again, someone's actually attacking me from outside my range, like me this time, so it just makes sense to defend and take minimum damage, which is pretty good. Alright, my turn again. My, it's my last turn, too. <laughs> begging all pardons, because they have to keep reminding us that he's a butler. <laughs> so, my last turn, so it makes sense to, you know, you just go full ham at this point. Uh, 
hit who you can. And uh, that's what I plan to do, actually. I'm gonna go all for it. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm just, I'm just trying to figure out what I'm going to attack. And I think I'm gonna attack the Recaro. Which is actually a suit that I don't know too much about. I think it's a transformable mobile armor. And it's got 8,000 HP, so there's a good chance that I'm right. Yes, it's a transformable suit. And see, I, I hit it pretty hard, but obviously, I didn't kill it. Um. See, it shoots, it misses. So that's my plan with the Cubile. It can't do tons and tons of damage. Um, so I try to, you know, just have her attack, uh, wear down people's HP, and that's just my strategy. Um, we're gonna use alert on him. And then I'm actually gonna do something else as well. I lose strike, which means that I can attack 100%. So, what this means is that I'm guaranteed to hit, and my opponent is guaranteed to lose, or to lose, to miss. And that's a good way to attack, um, boss enemies and tougher enemies if you don't want to get counterattacked. Uh, and Yazan, 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 Yazan is yelling at us. Yuma's like, no, no. And then we attack. So it's, it's pretty hype. Oh, what's he in again? I don't even know. I'll have to look at it. Is he, was he in a Godland? I don't even remember. <laughs> Get Abby! You love it. I love it. Oh, good. I beat Yazin. That's good. He's a D bag, so I will take any opportunity to beat him. And then the only other person that I definitely want to beat um, is Quattro, because I think he might actually drop an item if you beat him. No, see, look, uh, I guess some chop, chop him armor there. Uh, Yasin dropped that, so I'm going to try and beat good old Char, if possible. But I can't do that right now with, with, with the Die Hard 3. <laughs> So I'll just take out some grunt units. One, two, three. Bum, bum. Titan three. Titan no jishiroku o moishite morao ka? Ikizu! Titan Hamma! Titan Hamma! You love it. He went pretty all out with that. See, I like that they say that because he said da Daijo, and then that says C Captain. So, I assume that a daijo is Japanese for captain? Maybe I'm wrong, but it's just, it's kind of cool to see if you can make connections like that through the, um, initial language barrier junk. I don't know, maybe I'm really lame. Don't judge. Oof. Okay, so I have a 64% chance to hit, but I'm gonna do it. Uh, I see Camille's all, like, messed up, because, you know, Mentor's chilling with the bad guys. Quattro ain't saying nothing. Uh, Camille's trying to figure it out. Let's see what goes on. I'm really hoping I hit, because this will do tons of damage. Like, look at this. Look at that thing. Ooh, that is beautiful. Oh, Quattro, you mother... Fucker. Mm -hmm. As you can tell, I'm probably a little miffed about that not working, but whatever. I don't even care anymore. Not even a bit. I kind of care a little, but whatever. <laughs> See some more Quattro being pretty. Look at him, he's so majestically pretty. Admit it, female viewers, you like him because he was designed for you to like him. He's that soft, sensitive boy that you always wanted. Oh, you glow stick wielding 
thing you. I'm really bummed because I don't think they pop back up after this battle. I think they're literally only in this battle and then they're gone for the rest of the game. So I'm glad that we get to see a little bit of them before they're gone forever. Come on, Quatra. Or come on, Uso. Come on, come on. Eh. No, I can't hit him. I was hoping I could, but I, I really can't. So that's a bit of a bummer. And I could try to waste time trying to kill him, but at the same time, it's almost also worth it to uh, try and take out uh, other units that I can actually hit. <sighs> so that is my current plan. This is some awesome shoulder cannons right there. Oh, mother fucker. Did you see him hold on? He got like 38 health. Um, can I hit him? And I can't even hit him, so... Also a bummer. Oh well. Instead, I'll, I'll just fight another glow stick with mech. Well, these aren't very good. I wonder if they have models of the glow stick mech, because I'd really like to pick one up for myself. <laughs> they just, they amuse me beyond belief. You don't even know. And then, um, let's see, let's just have... Hmm... Alright, we'll just have Judo, um, and give me a second, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to figure what out what I want to do. I think I figured it out. We'll have him use his gun on, um, the violent. Oh, ooh, gotta stretch a bit. Oh, my joints. I'm in there! Firing his lasers. Oh. Uh, um, new types are basically um what many of the Gundam protagonists are. They're kind of like they get like weird Jedi psychic powers, and like they get like enhanced reflexes and mechs and a bunch of crazy stuff. So if you hear people talking about new types, um, that's what they are. They are like the best in the best pilot wise. And then, yeah, my enemies get one last turn to do uh, whatever the hell they want. And then I win the mission, I believe. One, two, three! Daitan three! God, this is my theme song. That's my theme song. I am the Daitan three. That thing has bladed feet. Bladed feet. Oh my god. What a design. Oh, good. The, the, one of the last glow stick things. It is the last glow stick thing. It's coming up for some close combat. Let's see how it holds up against Uso's V-Dash Gundam. Oh. The answer is, is that the white arc is going to block for it instead. Check this out. She got in the way and defended to take the damage. Which is pretty cool. That's another thing. You can have like people come in and they can help you attack, or they can help defend. It doesn't always do it, but it's really cool that that's another feature of the game. <laughs> and the last glow stick mech is down. Wunderbar. Alright. Explosion! Um, let's see, that last violin's gonna hit the white arc, but I don't think it'll kill her. So I'm gonna let it shoot her. Just because I wanna get the uh, experience and the money from killing it. Um, oh, and it missed anyways because it's a putz, so no need to worry. She's gonna send out some missiles. He's dead. So I really hope that actually means captain, because that would just be so cool. Oh, and she leveled up. Awesome. And I got 1300 from that. That is fantastico. 
Uh, and the other violin's gonna hit the Getter Dragon. But not really, because he still has Alert stacked. Remember, I used that last turn. So he will use that now to just instantly dodge this shit. Oh, he's all sad because he can't kill him. He's a bloodthirsty motherfucker. Um, I'm gonna let him get hit by the Mega Particle Cannon because I think he can take it. And he could dish out a bit of damage himself. <laughs> Might makes right. Because how many times have you heard a villain say that to justify themselves? Ugh. Get a laser cannon! Fire in the laser beam! Laser beam fired. Ooh, critical hit! Nice! Ugh. All right, and then he's gonna try to hit the um, double Zeta, but that's not gonna fly either. So no biggie there. Um, shoot, I need to go get myself another two liter. I've exhausted my beverages. Which, that'll happen. Oh, I, I love that, that hyper high mega launcher laser oh, cannon it has. Look at him, he's playing all cheeky with me. Ugh. Titans are D-bags, utter D-bags. Um, and then finally, we're gonna kill this one with Quantra. So even their theme song was pretty. Oh my god. Oh, Schneiser. <laughs> See, that stung a bit, but you get healed after each mission, so it's just like, whatever. He's gonna cut this guy up, and we'll be done with it. <sighs> Danger! I see mini nuclear reaction explosion. A level up, yes. You love it. I see Garrison's telling us the evacuation happened, and Banjo's like, we should peace as well. And we'll touch base with the rest of the preventers, get everyone back together. Garen says like, okay, we'll see you guys later, and I win I win the internets. Um let's see what goes down. Okay, got a little bit more plot going on. We're still chilling in Japan. Um Banjo's Lieutenant Quantro. Of course not. He'd never seriously joined the Titans, I know, but was forcing him to help. Uh, you know, the main members of Londo Bell at Konpai went missing when Londo Bell was disbanded by the Federation. So yeah, uh, like a bunch of guys went missing and they think the Titans have them. Um, Captain Bright saw it coming and so some of them also got out of the way. Like, some of the Londo Bell members were like, well shoot, the Federation's kind of looking a little evil. We should go underground before they arrest us. So some of them got away. But most of them didn't, because too much faith in the government. Uh, it's plain to see that Quattro and Bright and people were in captivity. And Ryoma's like, man, and Guru wants to know where they're at. I've been gathering info, but I'm still not sure. And Quattro has to fight because people are hostage. And Banju's like, yeah, that's probably what's going down. Uh, a bunch of scumbags, indeed. Still, I doubt that Quattro would help with no questions. He... Okay, so they assume that while Quattro's out and about working for the bad guys, he's also, like, you know, trying to, uh... Oh, brain stopped. Uh, just trying to find, like, his info on his own, and trying to find weaknesses. 
Ah, and Camille's all happy again. Quatra's being pretty. So yeah, they wanna they wanna get the the old team back together, but under the new name of the Preventers, and um, make sure that Project A just still starts and kill all the Titans for being a bunch of buttholes. Um, Judo's all for killing some people, and some girls just hanging out. Mar I, I don't know very much about Marbit. She's in Victory Gundam, which I've watched a bit of, but I'm not big on it, so or I haven't finished it. So I don't know much about her. Um, so yeah, basically there's a ton of small groups right now, and they're all being attacked by the Titans, and they're all going to try to meet up. <laughs> Benkai. To disband the AU, Karaba, and... Okay, the AU, Karaba, and League Militia are all um, Gundam teams. The AU is from uh, Zeta Gundam, Karaba is uh, Quatra's family, and the League Militia is from Victory Gundam. So they were all like, nah, we're gonna not deal with the Titans. And they're gonna stop the Titans, but we haven't gotten the band back together because cocaine. It's pretty safe to say that if the Preventers don't stop the Titans, nobody will. And it's like, well, we kinda suck. Um, trying to get the band back together. And Camille's pretty hype. He's one of the people from Londo Bell who didn't get captured because he was too smart. Um, and that's why the Zeta and Double Zeta didn't get taken. And same with the Cubelay Mark II, which I love. I love that one. And... Okay, the League Militia got attacked uh, at uh, Casarelia, but Camille saved them. So, more happiness. Uh, those are more people, I think, from uh, from the thing that my brain's from Victory Gundam. They're like side characters in Victory, and I think they were more main in the original Alpha game, but in Alpha Guide, they just kind of get mentioned. That happens with a lot of characters in this. Um, let's see. Marbet and Uso have to keep fighting, because Balmor War was pretty hype. Uh, see, everyone's like worried about their other lovers. Preventers gathering group, no, there's still a lot of people we don't know about, but I doubt the Titans have them all. Quatra's wondering where Duo and Hero are, because they're pretty cool guys. Pretty much the coolest guys in Wing Gundam, and they're pretty. Uh, see, everyone's all like got crazy sad stuff going on. Um, there's a rendezvous point, and they're gonna meet up so that they can do protagonist type stuff. Da 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 Alright. Time for a save. You love it. You love it. <laughs>